Retired Brigadier General Mark Kimmich joins us, former Assistant Secretary of State under President George W. Bush. Uh, thank you, General, for joining us. I uh, want to go to Vice President Harris, who's been vocal about this throughout the week, and listen to what she said about the possibility of a hostage deal and a ceasefire. Here's the Vice President. And has been an extraordinary leader in getting us to this point that we have this six-week deal. There are too many Palestinian civilians, innocent civilians have been killed. We need to get more aid in. We need to get the hostages out. If we're in a window of time right now where we can actually get a hostage deal done, we all want this conflict to end as soon as possible. What about that window of time? I think the Ramadan's been mentioned, as Robert uh, reported, begins Sunday, March 10th. Uh, what do you think happens here? Well, I think Robert's right. There's very little chance, in my mind, uh, save a significant concession on either the Hamas side or the Israeli side, that there's going to be any type of significant deal done before Sunday. Do you think that U.N. report, yeah, if you saw that yesterday, we talked about it briefly on the show. It was just coming out. Had any impact on the way the Israelis are negotiating this deal? There was, um, for those who didn't see it, the UN team found reasonable grounds to believe sexual violence occurred during the October 7th attack. I think a lot of people thought that was the case, but the UN confirms it. I want to go to Avi Hyman for a moment, National Public Diplomacy uh, Directorate, responding to that by saying this. Let's listen. Israel calls for the immediate convening of the UN Security Council with the aim of designating Hamas as a terrorist organization. The United Nations must impose international sanctions on Hamas. What do you think the impact of that was, if anything, on the dynamic in the negotiations? I don't think it had, had any effect in the least. I mean, this is something that was generally understood right. uh, on both sides. But look, let's be very clear. People are trying to get ahead of Prime Minister Netanyahu. He is sticking to his war aims which is the return of the hostages, defeat, destruction of Hamas, and destruction of the terrorist infrastructure. It is many of his opponents that are scaling back on those war aims, and Prime Minister Netanyahu sticking to those war aims, right or wrong, uh, that uh, is where we find ourselves today. And he has a significant amount of the Israeli population that agrees with them. So I don't think that there's going to be any breakthrough, and I don't think that there are any concessions that are going to be offered by Netanyahu in the short term either. What about the dynamic inside the Israeli government? A lot's been made of Benny Gantz, who had run against Netanyahu, coming here, meeting with the vice president this week. I want to put up a headline from Axios that talked about um, how he was lambasted at the White House about the war strategy. The quote in there was that the aid convoy disaster from last Thursday in Gaza, during which more than 100 Palestinians were killed, that was seen as a turning point for the Biden administration, then Gantz comes in, and you're still saying Netanyahu has a lot of support. It's not fracturing a bit? Well, certainly his political support is fracturing, but at the end of the day, that's a parliamentary democracy. Right. Uh, there will be a majority that pushes him out. So, in, in, look, the unsaid truth is a significant number, if not the majority of Israelis, agree with what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is. They they are not invoking 9-11. They're invoking December 7th, 1941. Nobody was asking for the Americans to a ceasefire five year, five months after uh, the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. Nobody held back on us and said we were violating the rules of war. Nobody said to us there was anything wrong with the destruction of the Japanese Empire, uh, one that we dropped two atomic bombs on. That's that's the thinking that Netanyahu's going on. And he's thinking also that if he does not finish his job, that will just simply be work left to one of his successors when Hamas attacks again in the future. Yeah, so, I, I just wonder if he's more alone in that thinking or, or more lonely in that thinking than he was. You know, in other words, there seems like there's more voices speaking up all around the world that you know, wouldn't really be radical voices, more moderate voices that are saying, you know what, I know the attack was terrible, the response needed to be um, strong, but maybe this is a bit too much. Well, I, I sure wish they had told that to the American Marines before they had to run up Iwo Jima. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.